Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily PIB analysis video. In the morning, these videos uh, of uh, Hindu analysis, they come and in the evening, the PIB lessons, they come. And from 1st of June, the mission 2020 is uh, starting and uh, I will discuss important MCQs in the evening time. And I will tell you about the fixed schedule of it, uh, but uh, this will be the most important thing for the uh, prelims 2020 aspirants. Okay, so this is going to be a huge thing and uh, uh, these uh, hindu and others videos they will be uh, continued like that and 30th may it is and uh, these lessons before the second june prelims this year uh, these are totally exam oriented lessons and uh, we are continuing these important questions to, uh, yet, yesterday we discussed about uh, some economy questions and uh, some art and culture questions now i'm continuing with the art and culture section and one more uh, environment question so let's start the lesson these are the numbers there you can call it and you can ask for these pendrive courses and the, here the website address is given and all these courses are avail available at 60 percent off so let's start the lesson first question remedial measures adopted to reduce soil erosion you see soil erosion many types of erosion are there sheet erosion gully erosion and uh, the, the action of water action of wind they all are uh, contributed to that but you see some solutions can be there like trees are a great solution they hold uh, the ground with the help of their roots and their branches so that is also a solution but it is not given here it is given as mixed cropping that is a solution because in this particular uh, cropping system multiple crops multiple types of crops they are uh, they, they are grown together and uh, next crop rotation it is also a method where in a rotation means once we will uh, grow a particular type of uh, crop and then next we will not repeat that we will uh, grow a different kind of crop so this is crop rotation and these things are very much helpful in retaining the soil there and it uh, binds that and one more thing is uh, like uh, the ratoons and all you must have heard about where they leave some things uh, after the harvesting and all and they will not uh, remove the uh, roots uh, from there so that also holds the ground now next is shifting cultivation also called as jhum kheti you see in this uh, technique the slash and burn two important things are there like found in the mainly northeastern tribes and uh, mainly it is attached to their uh, uh, particular system here they will burn some trees and uh, uh, they will uh, sl first slash them then they will uh, burn them and they will clear the area of the jungle at that time and they will uh, get settled there and they will do agriculture and all and after the some time some years when that land uh, particular area that will become uh, infertile then when, then uh, they will shift at some other place and they will do the same they will slash and they will burn the forest area there so this is shifting cultivation and according to the scientist opinion this is not a healthy practice and uh, due to the fire and all uh, they are threatening the uh, ecosystem they are uh, killing many bacteria and all and uh, it also helps in uh, this movement of the ground also because the roots uh, of those trees which they uh, burnt they were holding that ground and now it is the uh, the, the particular uh, inclining area and here the ground will shake now because it is not holded by the roots of them so uh, this is actually very much uh, supportive of the soil erosion phenomena so third would not be the answer one and two is the answer here many many times they have asked this question and the detail i'm give, I have given here answer is also given sheet erosion when the whole sheet is eroded uh, and uh, the gully erosion and the rill erosion you see the different types are are there and uh, water is the major uh, uh, worker here and uh, that soil part as that is removed with the streamlet only okay three important factors wind erosion water erosion and gravity erosion gravity erosion means in the hilly areas where uh, the inclining surfaces are there and when the surface becomes uh, weighted due to uh, some uh, water retention and all and then it will move according to the gravity so that happens and uh, due to that uh, land sliding issue the gravity erosion happens okay you can see everything is given here as i explained to you regarding the issues of uh, uh, these uh, mixed cropping mixed farming intercropping please go through all these details before going uh, uh, going to uh, appear in the prelims examination many times they ask questions regarding that and this zoom cultivation as i told you these are the areas uh, where uh, uh, in groups uh, these are found and uh, some practices related to upland rice which is there in the northeast area there they practice these kind of things okay 
नेक्स्ट जेन्स एंड बुद्धिज बुद्धिस्ट देयर फिलोसफीज देयर डेटाज देयर इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्ट्स they are every year asked in the upsc prelims examination one or two questions they are totally rel relatable with these uh, uh, the two important religious practices and their philosophies are much more important so these questions are related to that jain stresses their history through a succession of 24 victorious saviors uh, or the teachers which are called as tirthankars so we all know 24 tirthankars were there last one was mahavir swami so he was not the first rishabh dev or we call him adi dev also he was the first one and uh, uh, mahavir mahavir swami was the 24th one okay major jain festivals are parushana importantly for uh, uh, the shwetambars and for the, for the digambars the selection is there and mahavir jayanti diwali these are importantly uh, celebrated by jains that is correct and ekantwad establishes the multiple god theory in jainism no there is no multiple god theory in jainism uh, they do not even believe in any god and they say that uh, this is a eternal cycle that is going on and at anything is converted just in forms and nothing can be created out of nothing okay so it's a conservation of past also and they do not believe in any any kind of creator or god something like that so this is wrong and anikantwad is a basic theory in jainism it says that there can be multiple interpretations of the truths okay so there is no one end and language or the uh, understanding that we have this is only a particular aspect of that particular truth there may be many many aspects of the truth that may be we don't know and that is the theory and they say qualified yes to everything and they add shayad means shayad or perhaps this may be true perhaps this may be true so uh, by this perhaps word they accept multiple uh, explanations so this is the anikantwad theory and third is wrong first is also wrong second is on, only the correct option here okay the same thing as i told you truth is anekant means there is no single end no one ended no one sided and ma many sides are there and vad means doctrine or the way okay same thing is given here and uh, uh, one can experience the truth of a taste but cannot fully express the taste through language if i say i have tasted something that means i have only one explanation for that there may be multiple uh, uh, interpretations for that particular fact so it's a metaphysical concept and uh, they talk about these uh, issues in a very spiritual and psychological way and they say that it is all our perception and there can be multiple perceptions in the different environments or different understandings so we cannot say absolutely that this is the only meaning if i see a goat that means uh, it is not true that this uh, understanding that it's a goat that is taken as a perception by me it is not only the final assumption there can be multiple uh, theories regarding that multiple explanations regarding that so that's the thing and this is also a main uh, difference between the buddhist and jainist uh, philosophy buddha taught the middle path mahavir uh, as a uh, jain muni he uh, taught that uh, you accept both it is or it is not and there may be perhaps it is or perhaps it is not also so multiple theories uh, he accepted and one thing is of extremism jain then jain dharm means the extremist philosophy they uh, talk about the santharas or the salekhanas these things means they are synonyms and this is a practice where a person leaves everything behind even his life also he uh, leaves uh, eating breathing drinking everything and he submits his or her life to the ultimate reality so this is about getting the moksha why what is the reason reason is the karma theory of jainism jainism karma theory is very much extreme uh, philosophy and it is very much clear about the consequence theory means it uh, it says that uh, everything creates karma even you are breathing even if you are thinking then you are creating karma you end this karma it is polluting your soil and because karma is created in some form then it will have some consequences always so everything has its consequence and there cannot be any god any creator between your consequence and your uh, and your uh, karma so if there is a karma then you have to bear the consequences that means only aim to get the moksha is the end this karma okay even do not even think about anything and just leave everything behind so that is the that is the case and that is why it is a extremist uh, based uh, philosophy and uh, that is why it was not accepted by many people uh, and uh, many people they followed buddhist philosophy that is based on the middle path means do not go to jungles do not leave behind everything just stay at your home but 
just control your trishna control your desires and that is the ultimate evil of everything and karma is okay but uh, the desire is the biggest uh, culprit here and your desire and it will end all of your problems okay so in a way indirectly these things are talking about the liberation only and uh, and uh, ending your desire for everything else jainism talks about uh, in a karma way and they talk about the ending the trishna way and ending the desire way so that is the case okay so that is the case of syadvad also means uh, prediction logic means we may predict we may accept multiple uh, explanations maybe it is true maybe it is true so it's a syadvad shayad means perhaps this may be true this may be also true next no creator god in jainism existence has neither beginning nor end there is no beginning there is no end this eternal cycle is uh, going on and there is no creator in this world so that is the majestic philosophy of jainism and parushna is the festival where they recite kalp sutra and all these are the important doctrines of jainism so parushna is a seven day festival and uh, thus lakshana is a 10 day festival for different groups parushna is for shwetambars the lakshana is for the digambars okay so this jain festival uh, it's an annual jain festival and they celebrate it and uh, shwetambars recite the kalp sutras the gambals re recite their own texts okay parushna means abiding or coming together so that's important they may ask you about that regarding the mahavir uh, uh, jayanti you see it's a uh, 13th day of luni sonar month of chaitra uh, which uh, mainly comes in uh, 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 march and april according to the gregorian calendar and it is the day where legendary birthplace of kundagrama in bihar north uh, which is there in uh, north of patna there he got birth and diwali uh, is also observed by jainism means in hinduism it is the coming back of lord rama in ayodhya and they celebrated uh, with all the lightings and all and that is called diwali in hinduism but here according to jainas the attainment of moksha by mahavis that is uh, observed as diwali in their religion and it is the same day kartik amavasya and uh, decorated with the lights nirvan laddu is offered at that day so they may ask you about those details also and other hindu festivals are also uh, celebrated uh, by jainas like uh, akshadritya rakshamandan and others also next jainas do not believe in idol worship and all sects worship panch mahamantar that is wrong as uh, uh, you see some of them uh, they developed uh, this idol, idol worship also and uh, there are many sects you see these are the biggest sects that we all know shwetambar and digambar but other uh, uh, therapanthi and all others were also uh, uh, appeared later third karma is the basic principle within an overarching psycho cosmology in jainism as we discussed about that they but they believe in soul they believe in atman jivatma so that's why it is also wrong so all three are wrong options here and uh, the details are given here karma the basic philosophy here and as i told you main aim is to end the karma that is uh, the real carpet according to jainism and it pollutes your soil sorry uh, the soul uh, not soil uh, your your soul so that's uh, the case and liberation is achieved by following a path of purification so they tell about uh, that way also and uh, the data is given here as i explained to you the same thing is given here karma is thought of a kind of a pollution that taints the soul with various colors and this is called lesia okay so lesia is the pollution uh, with the multiple uh, 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 ways and if you uh, create a single karma then you need you need to take a rebirth here and the soul undergoes uh, transmigration and re reincarnates in various states of existences okay like heavens or hells and uh, humans or animals also you may be uh, taking a rebirth in the form of a uh, maybe a moth maybe a, uh, a lion maybe a, uh, a grass or something like that okay this so this is all accepted here in uh, jaina so they accept rebirth also they accept uh, uh, soul theory also they accept karma theory also but buddhism they do not accept the soul theory in buddhism there is no soul although they accept rebirth uh, rebirth and all these uh, issues of karmas and all but they do not believe in soul so that's a important uh, uh, difference in uh, both of them and uh, you see jain sites inequality sufferings and pains as evidence for the existence existence of karma that means they say that if karma is there then you need to bear the consequences and the, what kind of karma is there that will uh, be there if you have done good karmas then uh, good uh, consequences will be there but there will be consequences for sure okay so and this karma 
and a karmic theory attaches a great responsibility to individual actions and eliminates any reliance on some supposed existence of any divine grace or retribution means there is no god there is no creator that's the thing given here okay and uh, uh, they say that i can live as i like but my voice is irrevocable and i i cannot escape the consequences of it so these are the writings in this no god his prophet or his deputy or beloved can interfere with the human life and soul and it alone it is responsible for all it does means your soul is doing it is creating the karma if you are even you are thinking then you are creating some karma and you will need to bear the consequence and not, nobody can interfere uh, that process means always you have to bear the consequence there will be no disturbance so it's a very strict phenomena and very extreme phenomena of the consequence theory in jainism so that's the case okay so it is all uh, given here and uh, 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 the same thing that I explained to you, the case of Chandragut Maurya, the king who established this Maurya kingdom, he became a Jaina a follower in the later life and he ended his life in Shravan Belgola Karnataka by practicing Santhara practice means when you leave everything, eating, breathing, uh, sorry, eating, drinking and everything and you end your life and you submit your life to birds and all. So this is all Santhara. So Chandragut Maurya did that in, in uh, Sarn Belgola and who took him to Sarn Belgola? Bhadar Bahu. His guru was uh, uh, that person, spiritual guide who he uh, took him to Sarn Belgola with some monks. So some monks stayed in Magadha and uh, uh, Bhadar Bahu, he went to uh, Southern India. So uh, in that time, these uh, people uh, who stayed in Magadha, he, they tried to rewrite some doctrines and all because all these Purvas, they were lost. Purvas were the scriptures. So they were lost. So they tried to uh, rewrite them and uh, actually originally they started with the Rishabh Natha. So he uh, was not there. Purvas were also lost. So they uh, did something and they wrote something. But it was not accepted when Badr Bahu uh, came back to Magad. And there was a great schism uh, in between uh, these two groups. And the people who stayed in Magadha, they became Shwetambaras because they started wearing white clothes and Digambaras means no clothes. Sky is our cloth. So Digambaras. So Digambaras and Shwetambaras, two important uh, groups are there and other sects are also there. Okay, the details are uh, all given here and uh, Bhadra Bahu was the teacher of uh, the spiritual teacher of Chandragup Maurya. And Sthul Bhadra was the person who stayed there in Magadha and started Shwetambar sect. There is a different uh, opinion, there are different opinions uh, between both these groups uh, on these topics and re regarding the women also, the Gambara said that uh, women lacks the adamantine body and a rigid body and uh, they cannot experience the moksha issue and she must be reborn as a man before she can attain and uh, then only it can be possible as a male. So there is a gender bias also in the Gambara sect but Shwetambars, they accept both okay idol worship is also here digambar's tradition represents the idol of tirthankar as nude and uh, others uh, with some clothes and all so there is idol worship here and the uh, gomateshwara or the bahubali statue is there in shavan belgola and regarding that we discussed in the morning lesson so that is also important okay next question regarding buddhism and jain philosophies the difference is also given here and it is the same thing talking about uh, some issues in the explanation you can read about all these things okay i have highlighted the answers and the important details here okay Not the same thing they both deny the uh, uh, vedic philosophies and vedic traditions and all all these rituals are all so that's why they are called as gnostic uh, religions also because they deny vedas and all six orthodox schools are there and they accept the vedic uh, system so these are orthodox schools but they do not accept the vedic system they are called uh, non-orthodox non, non and uh, jainism sometimes is called as gnostic dharma because it does not uh, recognize any of the god or some kind of creator or the vedic philosophy so that is the thing okay and these uh, metaphysical theories are very uh, really uh, really very very great Mughal school of painting. Now we talk about the miniature painting that uh, got a great recognition during the Mughal time and it, it did not start during Jahangir's reign. It actually started in Akbar's reign only. And he was the person who was very much interested and keen in that uh, particular thing. And uh, when he uh, established the Fatehpur Sikri and that particular palace, uh, there he invited some 
artists okay and they were from persia like abu samad and all and uh, they started this system of miniature painting and mainly it was the secular painting of mughals that's why they always showed some hunting scenes darbar scenes and all there was no religious issue in that okay but when it got imitated in the Raj Rajputana system in Rajasthan, where the religious stones, uh, they became apparent and the Krishna and uh, Mirabai, all these uh, were uh, shown in these miniature paintings of Rajputana place. So, uh, there were some differences. Kangana school was also created, where out of uh, fear of these uh, Mughals, some people, uh, they uh, got settled into the Himalayan region. So, there they started the Kangana uh, uh, school of painting and that was also a miniature painting. So, these all are miniature paintings. Okay. And they had Persian origin. And, uh, we actually followed a Persian system in this uh, system where uh, Mughals started it. And oldest miniatures are Buddhist miniatures and made from 8th century and uh, Jaina's miniatures from 11th century to 16th century. So that is correct. So only three uh, is correct here. First and second, they both are wrong because it's the Persian origin largely that we are following here. Okay, Chinese miniature paintings are different. Buddhist miniature painting made from 8th century and Jaina's from 11th to 16th century. So these are the things and uh, all these uh, uh, things you will find in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London and uh, National Library of France also. Ma maximum number of images, more than India, so they are found there. These people took everything from here. And uh, you see the royal houses, they sponsored the miniature school uh, in Rajputana which is uh, nowadays called Rajasthan. Okay, so Pahari tradition was there, Rajasthani tradition was there, Deccani and Mughal school, all these were miniature uh, painting schools mainly started with the Mughal system. This is the Jaina painting. You can see these miniatures are shown here and uh, on some clothes uh, uh, it is shown here. In the uh, Buddhism effect you see the miniature Buddha is also shown here. So Atisha was the Buddhist Pala teacher who helped establish the Sarma lineage of Tibetan Buddhism. Sarman tradition. Okay. Mughal painting for unique blend of Indian, Persian and Islamic styles. So that's the case. Akbar Srin was uh, from 1556 to 1605 and he uh, uh, invited some important artists, Persian master artists like Mir Sayyid Ali and Abu Samad. So they were very much famous and they started uh, this Mughal school of miniature painting. Other uh, important uh, artists were also called from Hindu sect uh, like uh, Gujarat, Gwalir, Kashmir, Gharanas and uh, they gave birth to this new painting school. In Hamza Nama series also, this is also uh, shown and they are in the Persian Safavi style. Okay, Jahangir was the most important person who is relatable with the painting system because it became most famous during his reign. And next, Shah Jahan also continued the patronage of the painting and all. So all these uh, data are given here. Please go through the PDF also. Thanks a lot. Keep watching it, Amit Sani, and uh, the PDF you will get here.